Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me again. Today we're doing a review of the Chemo 20 volt lithium ion cordless drill. Now, the reason I picked this is because for the past few videos, I've been doing reviews of Milwaukee tools, which are high end professional grade tools. And I realized not everybody can afford those, so I thought, wouldn't it be great to do a review of a power tool that anybody can afford, that is much more into the mainstream, and I can satisfy those viewers of my channel that do not want the very expensive tools, they want more mainstream affordable tools. So that's why I found the Chemo 20 volt lithium ion drill. And I got this on Amazon, link is down below if you want to check them out. And obviously that's why it's a very generic brown box from Amazon. Let's pull it out and take a look at this. Get rid of the box. So it comes in a nice black pouch where you can keep it all your stuff together, store it all together, and it's very durable polyester kind of material, something like that. Very tough, does not come apart easily. It'll take a good beating and so forth if it gets dirty. You can just wipe it clean with a little soap and water and it'll be good as new. Now, let's see what we get inside. Nice little zippered pouch. You get the instructions that come with it, and I suggest you read that. Here we get the drill. We get the battery charger. Get some drill bits, some adapter bits, the battery, a flexible adapter, and the belt clip. That's everything that comes inside the bag. We'll put this aside for now. So, let's see. Let me get all this stuff organized, and then I'll tell you more what comes in this package. Okay, so here we have it organized. This is everything that you get in this combo pack. Now, this combo pack retails for about $59 on Amazon right now, and that is a value proposition. That is pretty good, because most of the other brands that you're going to compare this to, which this would be in line with comparing it with uh, Ryobi, Heartbrand, Bauer, etc., and they will not bring you all the stuff that you find here. That's why I thought this was a very good value package at $59. Most of the other brands are going to be more expensive and don't bring you any of this stuff. So let me tell you a little bit about all the little accessories that come with it. You get six twist bits right here. These are for drilling into steel, wood, plastic, stuff like that. And then you get uh, uh, three brad drill bits or auger bits, whatever you want to call them. And these are specifically for drilling into wood. Then you get this little combo package right here, which is full of all sorts of uh, drill bit attachments, such as uh, star bits, uh, Phillips, flathead, all sorts of other things like that, that are going to be very convenient for you when you're doing different projects. And obviously, the uh, belt clip, uh, special flex adapter, which we'll look in later on, and this helps you to get into tight places when you're doing different things. The battery charger, battery, and the drill itself. So let's focus on the drill itself now that you know the little accessories that come with it. Okay, so now focusing on the drill itself and the battery and charger, it comes with a desk mount or a tabletop mount charger. It does not have holes on the back so you cannot wall mount it. I guess if you wanted to, you could probably drill a couple holes or put some uh, double sided tape and stick it up on a wall or something. I leave that totally up to you, but it is meant for tabletop mounted. It is a very simple uh, uh, charger. It only has two lights. When you plug it into the wall, the green light comes on. When you put the battery in it to charge, the red light comes on. And when the battery is fully charged, the green light comes back on. Very simple, very simple. Anybody can figure that out. Not a very complicated system going on here compared to other manufacturers. The battery is 20 volt lithium ion, 2 amp hour battery which is in keeping with the Hart and the Ryobi, which bring two amp hour batteries, but better than the Bauer, which only comes with a 1.5 amp hour battery. The drill itself basically is uh, a drill driver and a hammer drill, so this is better than uh, the Ryobi and the Hart, because those are not drill uh, hammer drills, but it is in keeping with the Bauer, which is a hammer drill. And it is a very lightweight drill. It is not extremely heavy. It has a 21 position chuck and also a two position transmission back here. We're basically in the uh, first position. It goes from 0 to 350 RPMs. In the second position, it'll run from 0 to 1350 RPMs. 
So basically the, the drill itself has 330 inch-pounds of torque. The length of the tool is 7 inches and the weight is about 2.2 pounds. So it's very lightweight, not heavy in the hand. The plastic uh, feels well made, does not feel cheap or anything like that. It doesn't feel, it doesn't flex or anything. It's nice and stiff. Uh, I see no sharp edges, no um, anything to feel discomfort on your hand. It has a good rubber overmold over the trigger area, rubber overmold on the back for pushing on it. And it is a brushed unit. It is not brushless, okay? But that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem at all. Some people stick on that problem and they call it into a problem. It's not really a problem. By being a brushed unit, you get a cheaper tool cheaper that's better value for you if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of money and you don't want to pay for a brushless there's no need to this will get the job done just fine they do have a brushless version but it is like twenty dollars more so if you don't want to spend that you don't have to the battery itself is very similar to uh, DeWalt design I believe it is uh, it might be compatible I don't know I don't have one on hand to test on here but let's pop it on here very easy design slips right on no problem you have the LED down here that points up to your work area and uh, you have a position here and on the other side for putting the belt clip on it. I generally don't like using this but if you do you can put it right on there like that no problem at all. So that's very convenient right there. Uh, again with the battery and everything nicely weighted does not go either direction nice and convenient in the hand no problem at all and uh, let's see it does have a variable speed trigger as you can see it has a brake it stops very quickly instead of just spinning on randomly uh, you can see the arcing back here meaning it is not a brushless unit that is a telltale sign of a unit that is brushed so again, like I said, not an issue. I have had many brushed units, perfectly fine, not a problem. As far as the battery indicator, there is no indicator on the battery itself. This is very similar to the heart batteries where they do not have an indicator. It has a blank here. But unlike the heart, which doesn't have any indicator at all, unless you buy a bigger, more expensive battery, the bigger batteries do come with an indicator, but the 2.0 battery on the heart does not have any kind of indicator. And the heart does not have any indicator on the tool either. This tool has an indicator right there, and it tells you how fully charged your battery is simply by pulling on the trigger. And it has a three-like combination, green, yellow, red. Obviously, the green will go away, the yellow will go away, and down to the red as you drain the battery. So green, yellow, red tells you how you're doing for your battery charge. Pull the trigger, and it'll tell you exactly where you are. Like I said, the LED lights up your work site, no problem there. And it has a convenient little magnet right here on both sides where you can basically carry bits around. As you can see, it keeps it in there. It has a nice little indentation in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I whoop, missed that. It has a nice indentation. Well, even if you miss it, it still catches it. But it has a nice indentation if you put it in the right spot. It'll catch it very nicely. So, as you can see, shaking it around it stays on there it does not fall off so that's very good once you catch it in the right spot so you can have actually two bits on here one on each side to carry around with you so that works out very well it has a forward and reverse so forward there reverse there and locks in the middle so in the middle it doesn't do anything at all there you go. So, the clutch up here also you can set to drill, driver, or hammer drill. So that is kind of hard to do from underneath it, but there you go. You can set the different position that you want, and we're going to be testing this out in a minute. The uh, chuck is a metal chuck. As you can see, the magnet uh, does catch on it very nicely, so it does have a nice metal chuck. It is a 3 8 inch chuck, not a 1 half. Again, consumer grade, not a problem, perfectly good for the DIYer around the house, that kind of thing, no problem at all. And the thing about this tool, it also comes with a two-year warranty, which is more in keeping with the Hart, the Ryobi, etc. The Bauer, on the other hand, only comes with a 90-day warranty. 
So this is a better proposition as far as that goes. So that's pretty much everything I believe covering everything about the tool itself. So let's start testing it and see what it can do. Okay, so before we get over to the vise and start doing some uh, drilling and driving and testing and stuff like that, one of the tests I wanted to talk about first is the charging of the battery. Now, the battery did have some residual charge when I opened the box, so I drained it fully and then popped it on the charger to see how long it would take to charge. That's a normal test I always do. And this charger pretty much uh, charged it up and normally in keeping with all the other brands that I have tested in this type of tool, in this uh, price bracket. Uh, the owner's manual says that it'll take anywhere from 60 to 80 minutes to charge a battery. It took me an hour and 15 minutes to charge the battery, which is perfectly reasonable for this price point of tool here. The Hart, the Ryobi, and the Bauer were all in that same price range. I believe the Hart was the worst one that took the longest to charge. I don't remember. You can go check out those videos, and in each video, I tell you how long each battery took to charge. So go check out the Bauer, the Ryobi, and the Hart tools, and you'll see in there exactly how they all stack up against this tool right here. So uh, it charged it up perfectly fine, no problem at all. An hour and 15 minutes, normal charging period, not too slow, not too fast, appropriate for the price point, I would say. So let's move on to the vise and start testing this drill. Okay guys, so here we are testing the Chemo uh, drill driver hammer drill. And uh, basically we're starting off, as you can see, with a fully charged battery right there. And uh, one thing to point out, I'm not going to repeat this every single time, but you have to change it to one of the three functions that you're going to do as you're using it. I'm going to be doing that, obviously, as I change. Right now we're in the driver mode because I'm going to be drilling these screws in right here. So remember, every time you use it, have to change between positions. So driver mode, full chuck, that way it shouldn't slow it down at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive in these screws, start off with the easy ones, one and a quarter, two inch, and then three inch screws. And what we're going to do is simulate using this uh, four by four right here. We're going to simulate, you know, drilling into, uh, I mean, not drilling, driving screws into a deck, a fence, a stud in a wall, anything along those lines. Very common things you do around your house, your condo, townhome, apartment, whatever the case may be, drilling screws. Uh, even assembling furniture, very similar situation to this. So let's see what it can do. Let's pop these out of here. And we'll start off and see how it performs. Starting off with the simple ones, one and a quarter inch screws. Let's see what you can do. Going forward, there we go. And let's see. Uh, let's put it in position, the transmission into position number one. And I'm sure it'll go a lot slower from one to two. But let's show how this performs. Easy peasy, no problem at all. Position number two. Oh, there you see. That's the thing. Between one and two, you're going to get a big jump in speed. So let's see. Number one. Now, the thing is, number one is obviously slower but steadier. So if the heads are kind of shallow and you don't want it to pop off every time because it has too much uh, speed and torque to it, you may want to go a little bit slower. So you have to adjust based upon the project you're using it for. Faster isn't always better. That was number one there, slow and steady. Number two now. As you can see, it starts to pop off a tiny bit. Number one. No problem at all for a three inch screw. Let's go to number two and see if it doesn't spin off on me because these heads are a little bit shallow on these deck screws. They are deck screws. They are meant to be flush with the surface so they don't have a lot of meat to grab onto. Well, it does seem to have a little bit of heat protection built into it, so that way on number three it was a little bit too stressed out right there, and that made it a little harder for it to uh, perform. But, there you go. At least it protects the drill and the battery from overheating. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this flexible extension that came with this drill. And if you don't have one of these, you may want to consider getting one, whether you get it with this drill or as a separate uh, item that you purchase on your own. 
these are very useful and they come in very very handy when you're working in very strange hard to reach places where you really can't fit a full size drill into the location that you're working with or that you need to get into so let's say in a situation like this let's say I've put this board right here and I've attached it to the vise so it can't move and let's say we needed to drill it from underneath for whatever the reason let's just pretend that I need to put a screw under here to uh, attach something and I really can't fit the full size drill under here let's pretend there's another board or something underneath it this is where this flexible thing would come in handy where you could have the drill out here and attach the screw on the inside down here so you know you can bend it like that to accommodate whatever you need and then you just take like an attachment let's say a Phillips in this case you put it on the bottom here and you drive the screw which I'm going to do right now in just a moment so I'm explaining to you what needs to be done this is very handy a lot of times when you're working like in automotive on the interior of the car sometimes very hard to reach some of the screws to get some of the parts to come undone uh, when you're working on machinery like you know air conditioners refrigerators uh, computers things like that where they're very tight and hard to get things to come undone so let's try doing that right here right now with this one and see exactly how it comes together so you basically put one end into the chuck and you tighten it up and the other end you put in the bit that you're going to use in this case a Phillips alright so let's say I want to basically drive this screw onto the underside of this board let's see how we can do that from way up here as you can see I have the drill over here and I'm trying to see if I can get it in so you guys can see it there kinda of hard to do here but let's see oh, let me see if I can manage to do this and there you go as you can see I just drove the screw into there you can see it popping up from the bottom there using this attachment unit so it comes in handy for doing stuff like that it's not meant for driving huge screws or bolts or whatever it's not meant for that generally when you're getting into really tight places you're gonna be using you're gonna be dealing with very small screws now let's try to take this out of here again and it is flush with the bottom I drove it all the way through now let's back it out of there and here we go as you can see down there took the screw right out again so I put it in and I took it out so these flexible adapters are very convenient and if you don't have one I suggest you get one alright so let's try a little bit of drilling into this board that I just put right here let's use the biggest auger bit that came with it and let's see how that performs there we go alright let's drill through here and see what it can do alright that was the number one speed let's move on to number two no problem at all let's try something bigger alright I pull, pulled out a couple of my own drill bits these did not come with this kit so let's try these two sizes and see how it performs no problem at all let's try the other one
go. No problem at all. Let's try something else. Okay, here we go, guys. Now, basically, I put a cement drilling bit onto it so we can drill through some cement. It is a hammer drill, after all. So let's test the hammer drill functionality uh, on this cement brick right here. Now, we're going to use this basically to simulate if you need to drill into a cinder block wall, a cinder block fence, something like that around the house. That is what this drill is meant to be, mostly DIY around the house, that kind of a thing. So, Kimo, let's see what you can do. It did not come with this bit. This is one of my bits. It only comes with uh, general bits and some wood bits, but not cement drilling bits. So you're going to have to supply your own when you're doing something like that. So, put it on hammer drill there, full chuck, and let's put it on number two, number two back here to get the fastest speed out of it, and let's see what she can do. Well, that baby went through it no problem at all. Tighten that up. Let's try it again. Form like a champ that worked out just fine like you saw what is this like a two and a half inch uh, cement brick right there and it went through it with no trouble at all you can hear the motor sounds different when it's doing the hammering functionality okay guys so here we are back at the bench for some final thoughts on the chemo drill driver hammer drill all right so you saw we put it to a few tests first of all let me point out through all the testing that I did how much battery did it use up well it used up about one-third the battery you can see right there, the green one still lights up because the LEDs next to it light it up. But it is fairly faint. It is turned off. So about one-third the battery got used up uh, doing all the testing that we did. That's not too bad. That's, again, in keeping with most of the others. It doesn't seem to be too much of a battery hog. Fairly efficient for the type of drill that it is. Now, I know you're going to ask me, is it the best drill I've ever tested? No. The answer is no. Is it the worst drill that I have ever tested? No, definitely not. It's middle of the road. It is an average, good enough kind of a drill for the consumer. And that's exactly what this drill is made for. For the price point of what you're paying for this drill, for this combo pack, it is a good value package because you're getting the drill, the battery, the charger, and accessories. So for the price point, it is a fairly decent drill. Uh, I would say for work around the house, someone that is just starting out, like I mentioned previously, if you're just starting out, just bought yourself a, a condo or a townhome or you're living in an apartment, uh, you know, brand new home, you're getting into the DIY kind of a game and you want to start learning how to do things, you really don't know what tools you need at this point because you're just starting out. This is an excellent drill. It does three things for you, drill, drive, and hammer drill. And you saw it function perfectly doing all the different testing. It'll help you put furniture together, IKEA furniture, stuff like that. You can use this to put it together. Putting up pictures and different things you may want to put up on the wall. Putting up a fence or just making repairs around the house. That kind of stuff, it is a perfect drill for that. It's economical enough. It gets you in the door, gets you started, gets you to figure out exactly what you need to do, what kind of tools you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, and whatever happens, it is not a very expensive tool. So even if you decide you don't want to keep doing DIY stuff, it's not a ba bad thing to have around the house for whenever you need it. So I would say it's a great tool to start off with. Very good value proposition. Give it a look at. Take, check it out. Check out their website or the Amazon page, I should say. Check it out. See if it's for you. If you like it, then go from there. If not, again, totally up to you. I just put the facts out there for you to check it out and see what you want to do. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was informative to you. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can notify of all future videos I produce. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.